and welcome to the Book My Book, a podcast about the odd book or two we've read. I'm your host, Scott, but I'm not alone. Toby's here too. This episode, we're talking about The Abominable Snowman by R.A. Montgomery. It's a choose your own adventure, and we're going to be choosing and spoiling. So take this as your warning. Well, if that's okay with you, continue on, and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> hey, Toby, listener, we are going on an adventure. Me, you, Toby, I- I'm going to be the DM, if you will. Toby's okay. in the driving seat and you're at home. You're the passenger. It's an adventure. Okay. It's it's a choose your own adventure. It's it's the abominable snowman. Choose your own adventure. Oh, Toby. Cracking idea. You have about, you have 28 endings. Wow. But if this diagram at the back is accurate, I'd say there's five which are like the end end. Mm-hmm-hmm. There's a bunch very near the beginning and a whole load in the middle. I don't know. Okay. That's, I think that's loosely the path we oh, have. Look at that. I'm going to get a little bookmark so we don't always have to keep okay. going right back. But mm-hmm. um, th- this is basically going to be our Christmas episode. So okay. let's make it Christmassy. It's not Christmassy, but it's just snowy. Snowy. Yeah. So this sounds good to me. Pull up, pull up a sofa chair, pour yourself a nice mulled wine or a hot chocolate with some extra marshmallows. Or some chuck rum a, and coke. Chuck a log on the fire. Sit back and enjoy. That is Excellent. The Abominable Snowman by R.A. Montgomery. And I'm going to set a timer because I feel like this could run and we'll lose track of time. And it's probably only interesting for like a certain amount of time. What time is it? Quarter Let's past, find out. Right? We're going to see how about half hour goes and how far you can get. Yeah. Okay. You are a mountain climber. Three years ago, you spent the summer at a climbing school in the mountains of Colorado. Your instructor said you had natural skills as a climber. You made rapid progress. And by the end of the summer, you were leading difficult rock climbs and ice climbs. That's somebody summer, who's scared of heights. That's really quite impressive. I'm pleading myself are, right now. <laughs> I can't tell if you were joking. I once asked you how severe it was. And we were, we were on like a thick curb and you said, I get Oof. dizzy here. And we were on like a thick curb. So do you remember that? Yes. Was that it's true, true or were you making fun it's of me? It's completely true. We were literally standing on the ground on the pavement. Moments of vertigo where we're walking along a pavement and I glance to the left, if you're on that side of the road, and the pavement drops away and it's higher than I expect. It shudders the entire internals of my body. I feel the act of vertigo, the the scaredness of being up high just from the drop off the edge of a pavement. If it catches me unexpectedly, unawares. How do you get through the day? It's not all the time. It's 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 just moments where you just don't expect it to be as far as it is. So Even though it's only a foot, mm. it's it's still like whoa. whoa. That, you... that plunge. But is, you've been up the shard and like glass. No, I have not. Why buildings? would I ever go up the shard? That sounds like absolute madness. So, That's, that, that sounds like akin to climbing the Rockies in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carry you're on, in for a you treat were. then. Because <laughs> as I said, you are a mountain yeah. climber. <laughs> Reader decides to turn around and go back. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> that summer, you became close friends with a boy named Carlos. The two of you made a good climbing team. And last year, you were chosen to join an international team. The expedition made it to the top of two unclimbed peaks in South America. One night on that expedition, the group was seated around the cook tent at the base camp. The expedition leader, Franz, told stories of climbing in the Himalayas, the highest mountain in the world. The Himalayas form a great natural war between India and China, with Nepal tucked in amid the peaks. Everest, 2K, Annapurana are the best-known mountains in the Himalayas. Hmm. These and many other peaks have been climbed. Still, others lie in remote areas where few humans have gone. There, said Franz, in the high valleys beneath the snowfields, lives the Yeti. Some call the the abominable snowman. I didn't know. It's the name of the book, Toby. No, I did you, did you, did you, what? No. The Yeti no, is said to be you, a huge beast, Franz tells you. Mm-hmm. Perhaps a cross between a gorilla and a human. People cannot agree what it is. Is the Yeti dangerous? Carlos asks. Franz shrugged. 
Some say it is, other people say the Yeti is very gentle. Have you ever seen one? You inquire. No, almost no one has. The best proof of the Yeti's existence is a set of very large footprints discovered in the 50s by a British expedition. No one has ever photographed one, but I've heard stories, and the stories still persist. I think I've got a bit of yetiness going on with this beard. You've got the beard going on. It is impressive. Mm, it's good, isn't it? It's the biggest one I've ever grown. <laughs> Keeping right. you cosy. Keeping yeah. you cosy in the Himalayas. <laughs> it's you, really snowing here. <laughs> you and Carlos decide then and there to find the Yeti when you return from South America. The two of you raise money from the International Foundation for Research into Strange Phenomena. Your goal, proof positive that Yeti exists. You will find and photograph the Yeti. That is what brings you to Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. Your problems, though, have already begun. Two days ago, Carlos left, Carlos left by helicopter to look over a terrain near Mount Everest. The helicopter returned without him. The <gasps> pilot told you that Carlos. Carlos decided to stay up at the Everest base camp to check out a report that a Yeti had been seen. He's had he a radio bad. transmitter? He had a radio transmitter, but you have not received word from him. The weather turned bad and the radio communication was erupted. You have an appointment to speak with R.N. Runel, the director of expeditions and mountain research. He knows your plans and you need his help with official permits for the expedition. He will also have a good advice. But what about Carlos? Did okay, so, so we haven't met anybody bad yet. No. As far as I know. So no, there's no reason for anything untoward to have happened to Carlos. So maybe what we're being told is facts. I'm going to go with... It's the truth fact, line. he's stuck up Kathmandu. Well, he's chosen to stay up there. Yeah, but the radio's and gone. Then, and then, then, then the weather came in. That's true. Nat, it's all natural so far. Mm -hmm. Right. If you decide to cancel your meeting with Runar and search for Carlos, go to page seven. If you feel that Carlos is okay and go ahead with your plan to meet Runar, go to page eight. Sorry, take me back over why I'm meeting Carlos. It's going to be a long 45 minutes. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Basically, you're going to meet someone who is an expert in all things Yeti and the area. Right, okay. So am I trusting in Carlos's ability to carry on doing what he's doing? Mm, this am says I a lot worried about, you. about Carlos? Or am I going to go and find out more information about Yetiness? I'm going to go, I'm going, I'm going to trust Carlos. Carlos wouldn't, like, knowing Carlos as well as I do, I don't believe Carlos would do anything silly. And everything up until this point, feels completely natural and Carlos-like. So I'm going to follow through with this meeting that I've had with this Yeti expert. Go to page eight. You got this, Carlos. You walk down a street bordered by tall pines. They are green, blue, and the branches and needles are very fine and delicate. Hanging from the upper branches, I would look like huge tear-shaped blackish brown fruit. You stop and look up, wondering what they are. Then one moves, spreads giant wings and flaps off. They are bats, the largest bats you have ever seen. Do you have a bat phobia? How Not are you with your little At the moment, but I think I might develop one shortly. You reach the foreign ministry and you are shown a waiting room. You wait a few minutes and are ushered in to meet R.N. Renal, Director of Expeditions and Mountain Research for Nepalese government. Welcome to our country. We wish you success, but I have some bad news. The expedition Carlos you have. Is dead. <laughs> The expedition you have proposed could be very dangerous. You look at him not knowing what to expect. Recently, a large expedition set out without telling us that they were going after the Yeti, says Renault. They used guns and traps and tried to kill one of them. The Yeti are angry. That's interesting. That is interesting. Because I thought like... the Yeti was like a mysterious beast that no one's really seen. And singular. Yeah. Also, he's getting emails going, dear Mr. Renault, not happy with the recent spate of tourists. Hmm. Well, Toby... You left Carlos up there. There's guns and traps. Well, continue. I'm assuming this group of people didn't come back. Mr. Renal, we just want to find a Yeti. We have no intention of ever hurting a Yeti. I know that. We have checked up on you. It is a shame about the others. I must advise against going into Yeti territory. I could arrange a trip for you into Terii region, out of the mountains, in the jungle area, you could photograph and study the tigers. They are famous and also dangerous. Later, perhaps, you could conduct the expedition you are leading. If you decide to go ahead with the expedition for the Yeti, go to page 16. If you decide to postpone the expedition and let the Yeti calm down and go in search of tigers, turn to page 19. Oh, crikey, what a decision. 
I don't know nothing about Yetis. I don't know what their anger is like. And are they really that pissed off? Did they even exist? I'm assuming they don't exist. I thought we were going to find out and prove that they did exist. How do we know that they're, they're, they're angry? Spoiler alert, um, we know they exist, huh? Well... And this guy uh, knows they're, they're angry. I think we're meeting our bad guy. Oh, you think he's putting us off? I think he's trying to send us in a different direction. Because he different... used to be because he used to be a Yeti. He used to he be was a brought up by a, he was brought up by a family of Yetis. He's a Yeti who's half man, and since they're already half man. half man, he's just a man. He's taken the manness from a <laughs> yes, Yeti. Exactly, exactly. So he's trying to protect the Yetis. I'm going. I'm going on Yeti expedition. Plus, Carlos is now a day later. Mm. I still haven't heard anything. I'm worried about him. I'm starting to think now. Carlos, Carlos has sent me a text, a WhatsApp, or something by now. FaceTime. Mm. I'm not going to cheat and see what would happen if we were going to post postpone. Well, no, you don't cheat in a blooming but, choose your own adventure book. It's not choose your own adventure, but look, but that may happen. And but I'm just assuming that if you choose the tiger, that's that's the ending. No, can't be. Well, there's, there's we we, know, we 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 will never know. There's 28 endings, and parts. there's only about there's less than 100 pages. I'm yeah, sure well, I'm, that's I'm, an I'm ending. Not, mm. Page 16. So I'm going, what are we doing? We're going to find the Yeti. Mm-hmm. I'm I mean, sorry, it's called Mister. the Abominable Snowman. It would be disappointing Thanks. if 90% yeah. of the book was chasing tigers <laughs> in the jungle. The Tiger King. Uh, Dear Advertising Standards Agency, I'd like to complain <laughs> about the title of this book. <laughs> I appreciate your warning and kind offer of the alternative to go to Terai, you say. We are committed to this expedition. We will search for the Yeti with openness and friendship. R.N. Runor nods his head and speaks quickly to his assistant in Nepali. Within minutes, you have the necessary papers for the expedition stamped in the proper places with the official seal of the Nepalese government. As you shake hands before leaving, he stops you. If you are determined to go on your expedition, it could be easier and safer if I come with you. What should you do? Having a government official along with you might just cause delays and bureaucratic snafus. On the other hand, he could also smooth the way. Toby. Do we accept? Oh, well, I'm going. I'm going to. Ass- I'm going to go with. He's half Yeti. So I'm going to take him with me. <laughs> but aren't they like gorillas, like ten foot gorillas? Yeah, of course they are. Yeah, completely. But they're half human, half gorillas. And he's like you said, how human, human. So I'm going with. I'm going to take him with me. All right. We are going to accept Renault's offers to join us. Would you do something different? 24. Would you not take him? I guess I want to. I I do think he's bad, but I want to take him to see where it goes. Now that he's a member of your expedition, Runo sets out a government team to set up your base camp and find Carlos. Success. Carlos is found and he rejoins you. There you go. Hey. Told you. Carlos, brother. He has one leg missing. He has gut... No. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that was a twist. <laughs> Runo turns out to be an excellent team member. Six porters carry your food and tents and supplies. This leaves you free to explore the steep valley sides and the small villages along the way. The days are long, beginning at first light and until sunset. Your legs ache from the constant pounding as you walk along the narrow trails, which have served these Nepalese people for hundreds of years. Above you are bright blue skies dotted with clouds. The snow and ice flanks of Promoi and Everest rise above the green of the lower slopes. Turn to page 26. As you approach the village, Renal points out a large building with a red roof, which stands above the small, neat houses clustered about it. That's the monastery where there lives a monk. I don't know why I found that so hard. They come across a monk's house and is a Buddhist monk who has lived with the Yeti. But I thought no one had really seen one. I thought no one alive had spent time with the Yeti. Renal answers, a well-kept secret. Those who share the secret knowledge of the Yeti are pledged to reveal this knowledge only to appointed people. You and you alone are one of the appointed. It has been seen in the stars. It has been read in your hand. What do you mean? Who saw it in the stars? Who read it in my hand? Runel does not answer for several minutes. Then he speaks. If you accept the secret knowledge, your life will change and it will never be the same. Decide now. Are you ready for the secret knowledge of the Yeti and the responsibility that goes with it? Or do you want to reject the offer? Oh, my gosh. It's a bit red pill, blue pill. It is. Well, Toby, our oh, fate so, is in your hands. I'm torn. I am, I'm not going to lie. I am extremely torn in this decision because I feel like if I accept 
their stance on it and they're going to impart all this information and share their knowledge of living with the yeti they're going to feed me to the yeti Oof, you don't trust Renal still i feel like he's done a he's done a 180 he's sort of become good no, he's a great he's, team he's, player he's done nothing but get us up the mountain well i mean that's that's a quite a feat when you're in Kathmandu, though but he did try to steer us away though didn't he he did say hey look don't yes. go up the mountain go see the tigers but if he's read it in stars, maybe he's testing you. Maybe that was a test to see how easy you give up. And if he's trying to protect the Yeti, I feel like our mission is to photograph him and say, yo, check it out, telegraph. Here's the Yeti. Then why would we then why would he allow that? Well, Toby, that's the secret. If he's knowledge. protecting that the Yeti, question wouldn't implies... want the Yeti to get out. And I mean, he's I'm not gonna lie. This... No, I'm gonna go say no. I don't want I don't You're want gonna to say no? Me. Are you out of your mind? I'm ditching him at this point. I think the secret knowledge would just be you can't tell anyone. It's like the Matrix. You have to show people. You can't tell people. He can't trust me, though. <laughs> Are you so saying I'm not you're not giving him any reason? I, he's given me no. I've given him no reason to trust me. Well, he's ready in the stars. I, I think if, if I think I think but, if I <laughs> he tell he, the secret is why he trusts you. <laughs> right. Well, is I it? regret putting you in charge, but. You, Look you at you. You, you, th you think you think the secret is someone's run up to you and said, Yo, I've got a massive secret about the Yeti. Do you want to know? It's and not the there. secret, isn't the secret isn't why he trusts me. The secret is about the Yeti. Yeah. Surprise, the Yeti eats humans. Off you go, you're dead. <sighs> it's not the Yeti only likes people I like. I think the and Yeti... I like you, therefore you can have my secret and film the Yeti and take photos of the Yeti to share with the world. That's not what we're here for. I think the Yeti are running Wall Street. I think they've got the capitalist gain on America and the world. They're in, they're into crypto. That we'll never know, Toby. No, because we're taking my route and it's Ten. my story. So Ten. we're not going to follow him anymore. We're going to say thanks very much. Your help has been greatly appreciated. I'll see you later. You look at Ronell. You look at the monastery, you look at Carlos. No, I'm not ready to accept your offer. No sooner have you spoken the words than clouds choke the narrow valley. The mountains seem to vanish and the monastery is swallowed up by darkness. Ronald turns his back to you and speaks as if to the wind. I'm very sorry that you cannot accept. Since you do not feel that you can go ahead, the expedition is declared over. All permits are revoked. You must return to the city of Kathmandu and leave the country in 24 hours. The note of finality in Renewal's, in Renewal's voice tells you that you have no choice whatsoever. Your trip is over. The end. Oh, you're kidding me! What is this? What did you... What, what is this? Did, what did you think That's was going to happen? That's not a choose-your-own-adventure. Well, yeah, but you chose... Not, what the... Did, what? Do you want knowledge or not? And you went with I am not. utterly disgusted with that the outcome. <laughs> that is not the outcome that in any way, God, thank God it was only a dream. <laughs> I wake up and I suddenly decide that the right choice of path is to carry on with the story and take a different one to the one I just chose. Right, you want, oh you want to go God. back to that split? We can go. Yeah, of I'm, course I do. Okay. I'm not ending my story <laughs> now. Well, I don't but know. You was, might... that, was, that was shocking. You're probably going to say, you know what? Let's go look at the tigers. Screw this. <laughs> How on earth did they come to the conclusion that? Oh, that's. Have that's you see this pen? I'm, I'm putting a tally. That one okay. is how many times you've killed us. Yeah. Bad ending. <laughs> you are ready for the secret knowledge of the Yeti and the responsibility that goes with it. Turn to page 40. We should have done a spoiler warning on this one. Huh? Hmm. I gladly accept your offer and I am ready for the knowledge. Come with You're me. Dead. <laughs> he, leads, he leads you to the monastery. Carlos stays behind. You and Ronal <gasps> enter the monastery through the huge wooden door. It's dark inside, but you make out a figure of an old man seated in the floor. Behind him is a statue of Buddha. The man welcomes you and motions you to sit before him, and you see that he's wearing the robes of a monk. You are served yak butter tea, a thick broth that you find hard to swallow. Listen well with heart, head, and body. Listen with eyes more than with ears. Heed the cry of the Yeti, the old monk tells you. You can hear bells in the distance and wind in the pine trees just outside the window. It is beautiful. You sit for what seems like hours, listening with your whole being. Finally, the monk speaks. Time now to go on with the journey. What journey, you ask? This is getting too weird. A continuation of the one you are already on, he replies. 
if you agree to take the journey, turn to page 51. If you decide you are not prepared to change your life forever, turn to page 63. Toby. I don't believe it's a good journey to go on. I have think you learned trap. from your lessons, Toby? I feel like we're being, uh, we're being okay. given a chance to correct Fine. Us. I'll take the only real option and I'll go on. <laughs> yes, I'll continue with this journey. Monk no, who's told me you. absolutely nothing. And he taps you on the shoulder and you raise and follow him to the back of the monastery behind the Golden Buddha. The heavy smell of rose-scented incense fills the air. The Yeti are guides to Shangri-La. They take the chosen people to this hidden valley, which many have heard of and only few have seen. You nod, wondering what comes next. One last chance, my friend. Turn back now and live a normal life with your friend, Carlos. Go ahead and accept the life of a secret world. Do you I would accept the life of a turn secret back world. or turn forward? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, some of these I'm endings... Sorry, can I just say, I'm very surprised that Carlos has just accepted his responsibility in this mission to just stay behind. I think Carlos is upset with you because you, he was sort of lost on the mountain and you sort of didn't go to save him back on the early pages. Well, I, I, I met this guy who's in a, just basically opened all the doors. Well, we'll never know what would have happened unless we turn back. But mm. you actually now have the option to go on or turn back. I feel well, like I'll... You <laughs> surprised me. I feel like we're getting <laughs> a few of the same... Uh, I feel like they're sneaking some of these Choose Your Own Adventures because they're like... We'll call it a day or continue. Yeah, exactly. If you go on, turn to page 70. We're quite into this. I guess, I, did you used to read these kind of books as a kid? Yeah, the um, the Livingston and other guy. There's two mm, I remember them being thicker. They were more teen yeah, than yeah. the child. Yeah. I am ready. Ronal, lead the way. Ronal, I, I feel like I pronounced his name differently. The, the, there's been a <laughs> progress of his name. Ronal taps three times on the back of the Buddha. Near the spot where its skull and neck join, it makes a clanging sound like symbols being struck. Awesome. Before you stand... Sorry, it says awesome. <laughs> awesome. Before you stand a seven-foot-tall being with broad shoulders and huge feet, his face is gentle and kind. You are not frightened. Ronal introduces him. This is Zodak. He is your special guide. Follow him and he will take you where you must go. Can I say uh, goodbye to... Just, have we just met a yeti? I think so. Jesus. I mean, what, a, a, it's a not white. He doesn't say he's white and hairy. He just says he's broad shoulders, huge footed, but with a kind and gentle face, and he's seven foot tall. That was a bit of a underwhelming. We'll wait for this next line. Ready? Ooh. Can I say goodbye to Carlos? I'm not sure what Carlos is doing here. If we're saying goodbye now, exactly. He went up a mountain, got lost. We found him. He was fine. And then he just stood in the background. Oh, pointless. I never like Carlos. It is not usual. I do not advise it. It might upset him and you. However, if you wish, go and say farewell. Toby, we can, oh, we can basically Jesus. ditch Carlos without a word, or we can say goodbye. So everything up until now has been literal. So I'm going to take. I'm not going to say goodbye to Carlos and carry on. Oh, you got it again. Okay, you got it in for Carlos. You never wanted no, him I on haven't. trip to start with. I did. I have not. Well, maybe I have a bit. Actually, <laughs> thinking about it, I did ditch him when he was in trouble. But I worry that if I go back and say, "Look, I'm going to go ahead without you," he's going to shoot me out of jealousy. <laughs> well, you're, I think you're kids, right? I don't know. Yeah, because oh, you remember yeah, the beginning. It's are. like, yeah, we are. We are. We are. Yeah, yeah. we're sort of. Children. Mm. Children are culpable to jealousy as well. I, it's ditch, I feel like this is a test. Um, it might be a, to test. Might, might be a hook act to the head. If you decide against bidding farewell, turn to page 92. Oh, fuck. You've now made me think I'm going to die again. Finger time. Now, finger time. <laughs> Zodak motions you to follow. He takes one giant step into the air, and you look with amazement as he hovers a metre off the ground. Then you step up into the air and you two are suspended above the floor of the monastery. You are levitating. Whoosh. The two of you zoom out of the monastery right through the walls up into the sky. You travel, you travel at unimaginable speeds and you climb at a dizzying pace until the two of you stand on top of a sharp icy crest of Mount Everest. 
below you see stretched glaciers, mountains, valleys, and you see the world from the top. Zodak points to a narrow slot near the topmost point of Mount Everest. He says, that is the route to Shangri-La. He takes three steps, enters the slot, and disappears from sight. Uh, so there's a picture here of levitating. He's definitely a yeti. Just in okay, case let me it see this yeti. Because describe that picture. <laughs> My God. It, it, <laughs> it looks like an overweight Grinch. I mean, they could have mentioned he was naked and covered in hair. Just because just <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was a big guy. I guess you, no, you clocked that's, onto that's it. That's a yeti. And to page 97. Well, hang I on. Feel like have, have I not had a choice? There's, there's no option. No option. Okay. You take one last look at the earth about you and you see the clouds rolling up from the flat. Dry plains in the Punjab of India. You see the curve of the earth. You see the contrail of an airplane far to the south. You step into the narrow chute. It's warm, glistening with the shine of a metal unknown to you. You hover in space in the narrow metal tube. In truth, you are moving at a great speed down to the center of Everest. There is a rose-colored glow around you. Where is Zodak? Some guide, you think, leaving you alone. What's next? Turn to page 112. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're surrounded by metal. An unseen metal. Uh, the shine of a metal unknown to you. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you sounds more like aliens and. I mean, don't forget you're so flying. Moment. You're flying through the air this stage. But that's shank beams. Yeah, Tractor beams. I think they're going more for a, metal. like a spiritual thing, no? though. I, I think I've just been abducted by aliens. I'm going Should to have get seen those tigers, boat. huh? I'm wishing I had now. Yeah, it's not quite what I thought it was going to be. The abominable snowman. No, well, I thought it was going to be like, you know, hide in the cave or shoot the yeti sort of. Not, well, well, I'm heading for an anal probe today. Let's go. Page one one two. With a gentle bump, you come to rest. In front of you is a clear glass door. You push it open. There stands Zodak. Welcome to Shangri La. You walk out into the dark green valley surrounded by low-lying hills. In the distance are mountains, are high mountains. One of them looks like Everest. You hear music unlike any music you've ever heard before. It is somewhat like the sounds in the monastery, the bells, the wind, the sunlight is warming and relaxing. Go to the next page. So that leads you down a long trail of seven-story buildings. It seems to be a fortress, but it is painted white and red and gold. There are no soldiers, no guns, only people who smile and greet you as though you're an old friend. It seems so natural. You turn to Zodok and you get a shock. His form has changed. Now he is the mirror image of you. What does this mean? Although you never find out about that, <laughs> you learn many things as you stay in the valley. You have the chance to try many activities you could never try before, but only what is available in the valley. You learn to be contented with the limits of the small valley. Second thoughts, turn to page 107. I think we just found enlightenment, Toby, in our first go. <laughs> Come on, don't you know? Nailed it. One last chance. That's Is that it? For... Is that what you want? Okay, you're on. Out of the valley of Shangri-La and back to the real world. Is it different? Can you do whatever you want? Can you fulfill your dreams? Can you enjoy the life? Can you enjoy your life completely? Or must you be content with its limits? The end. Toby, I think you made it to one of the very ends. Out of 28 options, one, two, three, four, four, there's five, like, bottom of the rabbit holes. And I think finding enlightenment is one of them. I'm impressed. It doesn't make for great reading or a great adventure. <laughs> but, you know, you found, like, spiritual enlightenment. And you flew with a Yeti, so don't be too disappointed with full, full spiritual enlightenment, Toby. What? <laughs> she I, said bye to Carlos, didn't you? Hey. I, I, you, oh, let's go back. What would happen <laughs> if we'd say goodbye to Carlos? If you go and bid farewell to Carlos, turn to page 19. <laughs> you're, you're sort of acting like that wasn't a fulfilling, satisfying ending, Toby. That was a shocking ending. Nothing happened. It's more... Um, there was lots of unexplained metals and... Mm. Ooh, he turned into a mirror image of myself. I'll never find out about that. Well, why? <laughs> okay. You walk out of the room. The Yeti, Zodak, accompanies you. 
Carlos stands outside as he was when you left him. He is frozen in time. He can't hear you, nor can you hear him. You have become a part of a different world. You start to realize some of the consequences of your decisions to go to Shangri-La. You say a quiet goodbye to Carlos, even though he cannot hear you. You follow Zodak back into the monastery. Turn to page 92. Zodak motions you to follow. He takes one giant step into the air. You look with amazement as he hovers a meter off the ground. We're back there. <laughs> so we're back. We've done a little mini loop there. So you really just chose not to say goodbye to Carlos with no... Uh, with no, no recompense. I think I think the author of this book needs to learn about what choose your own adventure books are. About. Well, this is number one in the series, so maybe well, obviously he was finding his feet or she her feet, depending on. Do you want no. to see what would happen if he would have chased Carlos at the very beginning? Yeah, because we <laughs> we still got. Remember, I said let's set an hour limit so it doesn't get bit arduous. It, it did yeah. get arduous, but it didn't take an hour. <laughs> it didn't. You Gosh. walk down the street, bordered by tall pines. They are blue and... I don't know, <laughs> wrong page. <Wait>. So. What? <laughs> this is, this is going to search before. for Carlos back at the beginning. Okay. The helicopter stays at base camp, and you and Renal decide to descend a... F that can't be right. If you decide to cancel your meeting, Renal, if you feel that Carlos... Okay, page seven. I, I hit the wrong page. This is searching for Carlos. You telephone Mr. Renal at the Foreign Ministry. This is an emergency, Mr. Renal. My friend Carlos is missing at base camp. I need help right now. Of course, I understand. Please allow me the honor of coming with you. I know the region well. You gladly accept the help of Mr. Renal. His reputation as a mountaineer is excellent, and he's able to arrange for the Royal Nepalese Army helicopter to meet you at the local airport. Two hours later, you land at the Everest base camp where Carlos was last seen. His red nylon mountain tent is still there, but the storm has erased all footprints. Most reports of the Yeti have them well below base camp, but it's possible they're up in this high, Renal says, as the two of you stand by the tent looking at the glacier and the high peaks. Uh, if you and Renal search below the base camp, turn to page nine. If you go above the base camp, turn to page 13. Hang on a minute. In the other decision, Carlos is just there. Mm -hmm. There's no explanation for where he's been or anything. He's mm. just, oh, hello. Hello. Yeah. But in this one, mm -hmm. we have to go find him. Okay. Yes. It's, so it's like I'm we're go going up. down a whole different adventure. I think we need to let go of the last story. Yeah, and yeah that didn't happen. That's the whole I'm point go, of this, I'm, right? going, I'm going up. You're going up. Mm -hmm. Just remind you that the Yeti are mostly stay below. And I would like some good Yeti action in this. So far, it's just okay. Been let's go find the Yeti. <laughs> Wait, do you want to go up or down? Down. Down. All right. Below the base, page nine. The helicopter stays at base camp, and you and Renal descend on foot along a narrow, rocky path below the slow line into a pine forest. It takes many hours of careful walking. The trail suddenly becomes very steep, and one side falls off more than a thousand meters to the river gorge. You come to a small stone house with a thatched roof and an old woman sits in the sunlight by the door. Can you tell us if any climbers came by here? My friend is about five foot nine, medium build and has dark hair. Renal translates your description in Nep Nepalese and the woman nods and says two men came by, the younger one left a note. Don't follow, wait at base camp, Carlos. Now this Renal is what I'm talking about. With a puzzled look. If it were up to me, I would ignore this message, but you know him better. What do we? No. Do we know him better? <laughs> no. at all. It almost feels like Tyler Durden levels. Of... Mm. Yeah. Although, <laughs> uh, to be fair, I did say we'd, he'd be fine and he was fine. Mm. But I, I'm going to. also pursue... said ditch him. I'm, I'm going to pursue danger. So you're going to ignore the message I and am carry indeed. on looking for Carlos. I'm going to put my. Thumb there. Carlos may be in trouble. We must find him. <laughs> Renal nods in agreement and he gives the woman two copper coins. She smiles at him and speaks rapidly in Nepalese. Then she shuffles into the house. You and Renal remain outside next to the small garden where squash lie ripening. What was that all about? What did the old woman say? 
You adjust your rucksack straps and stop them from chafing your shoulders. Ronal looks at you and says, the woman claims that your friend was traveling with a Yeti. You stare at Ronal in disbelief. But why not? You are here to find them. Maybe they found you this time. You head down the trail, not quite knowing what to expect. Turn to page 32. Bloody hell. Man, they, no. they're very casual with dropping in their Yetis, huh? Mm. As you race down the path, you see footprints that might have been left by a Yeti. Suddenly, it is very quiet. The birds have stopped singing, and the only sounds you hear is your footsteps and Ronald's right behind you. You wonder why. It doesn't take long to find out. Around a turn in the path, you unsmack smack into a band of creatures that can only be the Yeti. They are aiming an ancient bronze cannon at you, and one of them touches a light to the fuse. <laughs> and that is the last <laughs> thing you remember until you wake up in your own bed. It must have been the awesome triple decker with mustard, anchovies, and chocolate syrup. The end. I, I think that's a dream ending. I woke up and it was all a dream. It must have been the what? Around a turn in the path, you run smack into a band of creatures that can only be the Yeti. They are aiming an ancient bronze cannon at you, and one of them touches a light to the fuse. That is the last thing you remember until you wake up in your own bed. It must have been the awesome triple decker with mustard anchovies and chocolate syrup. The end. Triple decker with... <laughs> I'm and guessing you're saying it's like a food dream, you know, what like cheese on dream. Earth is that about? Let's go back. <sighs> Wowzers! I am in in awe of this writing. All right, and so not to drag on this episode, we, you, I'm gonna we're gonna have to give you two more two more option paths. Okay, do yeah, okay. All right, I just got that was that was a crazy ending. It's a bloody cheese dream. <laughs> I'd rather have just been killed by the cannon with the Yetis. Yeah. And what do the Yetis do with cannons? Well, they're ancient. They're an they ancient run in the trees and that's what they do then? Oh, wow. Gosh. Mm. They're free, uh, very loose with their uh, understanding. Also, they really called it the abominable snowman and then instantly said, we're calling it the Yeti. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? <sighs> you obey the message and climb back up to base camp to wait for Carlos. Turn to page 20. Probably be best to return to base camp, you say. However, it's getting late and the trail back up will be especially dangerous right now. I think we should stay here till dawn, Renault encounters. You make arrangements with the woman to spend the night. She brings a simple meal of rice, squash and buttered tea. You are very nervous, but you trust Carlos's judgment. Whatever is going on is out of your hands for now anyway. This must be what he felt when we took the other path. We basically, we've become the... the uh, <laughs> That's it, the Robin. He's Batman and we're Robin. He's off finding yep. Yetis and we're hanging out. Now I know how it feels. Yeah, left. You can't sleep and the wind of the high mountains keeps you restless and heightens your worry. Close to dawn, you hear a high piercing scream. Turn to page 31. Gosh. Yowie! That's, that's, that's how it's spelled. I don't know. <laughs> Yowie! The noise Yay! seems to be coming from right outside your window. Ronald moves quickly to the doorway. The woman outside the house at the edge of the trail holding up a battered Kesserine lantern. You hear the cry again. This time it's even louder. Yowie! Yee, yee, yowie! Suddenly the sound diminishes. <laughs> it seems to be going further and further away. The woman waves her lantern. Is it a signal or is she trying to frighten whatever it was away? Those are the Yeti, she says. They invite you to join them with your friend, Carlos. What should you do? This is more than you bargained for. You look at Renal. Is it more than you bargained for? I thought it was exactly, exactly what, what I want. For. That's what I came up here for. I mean, it would, he's going to trip balls if, if he knew what the other path for him was. <laughs> if it's, I'll tell you what. If, it's, if, the, if the deaths in this book get extreme as it was a cheese dream, I am massively disappointed. <laughs> this is not a Livingston and... Whatever the other guy's name was, like Jackson and Livingston. You look at an adventure book, and then at the woman. It is chilly and half light of morning. The Yeti sound is growing fainter by the minute. If you follow the sound of the Yeti, page forty-three. If you return to base camp and helicopter, page forty-five. Go for the Yeti. 
Well, I mean, I would say so, but some of the decisions you make, maybe there's an option here, Toby, that says uh, head home and have a nice hot bath. (laughs) Oh, jeez. You run down the trail with Renard following. Minutes later, you jerk to a halt. There, in front of you, is the body of a yak, the ox of the high mountains. Its horns have been savagely twisted off. Oh, Christ. Finally! (laughs) And they are now used as markers to point the way from the path to a thick rhododendron and pine grove. I, d- I guess I was picturing like barren Everest landscape, but there's like rhododendrons and pine groves and old ladies yeah. with tea. Uh, yeah. I guess we went down, right? Yes, we did. And that was base camp, so it kind of makes sense. Mm. I guess I've never thought of it below base camp. No. You pause, <laughs> looking at the horrible sight of the dead yak. The horns may be pointing you to Carlos but they might be a trap. If you take Renal with you into the groove for added protection, turn to page 58. If you leave Renal behind as a, gear, as a rear guard, because one person can move more quietly and quickly, then you go into the groove yourself, turn to page 62. That's a decision. There we go. I feel like this is, this is the toughest decision we have. Mm-hmm. You thought mm-hmm. he was a yak. So does that make him big and clunky and noisy in your eyes? Yeah. I'm going to go singular. I mean, I guess we're getting a lot of yak action, but it's not what I thought it was going to be. No. Yaks? What? what, what? Not yak yaks, action. sorry. Yes. <laughs> we have one action. yak. I mean, He's I guess we dead. got... I mean, that was a cool death. Had his horns twisted off. No, so finally, it was something akin to what I was expecting. Blood and twisted... Mm. You ask yourself, why are you doing this? Who knows what's in there? But Carlos is in danger. So you enter into the thicket. The pale light barely penetrates the pine trees. After 15 minutes of slow progress, you come across a strange looking fence. It seems to be made of some kind of aluminium or stainless steel. You test it and the gate swings open. Strange metal again. Peculiar that it was not locked. A well-worn path leads to a rock face. At the base of the rock face, there is a strange carving. A a bright red door leads into the rock wall and there's a path that goes the other way. Do you take the path or the door? The door. 32. With your heart thumping so hard, you believe the whole world can hear it. You push the red door open. Inside is a tunnel with smooth walls illuminated by a gentle rose-colored light. There are no signs of life. The tunnel winds for several meters and then ends abruptly. You find yourself standing in the long, narrow valley with steep walls leading to high snow-covered peaks. Probably La Choche and Promoy from the look of them. I think those are just two mountains. Mm. The valley is warm, filled with flowering plants and trees, well guarded from strong winds. I believe we've been down this path before. Uh, a boy of eight or nine sits on a carved bench and he smiles at you and says in English, welcome. We thought you would come. Your friend Carlos is anxious to see you. Where is Carlos? Oh, not far off. If you wish to join him, you must agree never to go back into the world you came from. Do you understand? Welcome to Shangri-La. Yes, I agree. You're joining him. This is what this is what all this was about. We've you choosing taken Carlos, Carlos with us. Mm-hmm. You feel confident, and once you get to Carlos, he's swinging a pickaxe around and he slams it into you. No, <laughs> check it. <Are> ah, <laughs> your eyes popped out your head. I thought I'd give you the Carlos a bit, a little flavour of the Carlos story you always wanted. Oh no, it's like the descent. <laughs> You feel confident that once you get to Carlos, the two of you can plan an escape. The child, who is dressed in a dark maroon robe, similar to that worn by the Buddhist monks, leads you down to the valley. As if by magic, the valley appears as a city of light. Its radiance astounds you. Its brilliance dazzles you, but it doesn't blind you. Your fear fades. Turn to page 109. With gliding motions, you fly along the pathway. It feels as if you've been here before. Here we are. Please enter. (laughs) Funnily the boy <laughs> points the way to a building that shimmers of light, and it reminds you of the Taj Mahal, except that it has many more towers, and the main dome is surrounded by hundreds of smaller domes, almost like the leaves of a flower. You take several steps forward, and you feel the grasping of a force not unlike magnetic force. You are held into the force for several seconds and transported into the innermost room of the building. Turn to page 60. Carlos is in the center of the group of people while you look on in amazement. Some of the people change form before your very eyes. One moment they are Yeti, the next they are Unicorn, smiling. Carlos speaks to you. Welcome. (laughs) You have completed a difficult journey and found your way to knowledge. Now begins the true journey, the end. 
Toby, oh. I think we're going to have to wrap up Choose Your Own Adventure 1, The Abominable Snowman there. I yeah. think we made it to two satisfying endings. Yeah, I think I think we found the, probably the two best endings that it has to offer. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't say that I was uh, overly enamoured with them as endings uh, or journeys to be that. Well, the Yeti was going to be more menacing animal. Yes, especially from, judging from that front cover. Yeah. It does make him look pretty... Uh, but no, no, he's just... Well, friendly. we did find in... You know, entrance to Shangri-La. We did find enlightenment twice in our the only, the, That's not bad. Had, no, um, and the only bad endings we've got were you chose to go home and it was mm. a cheese dream. Do you want me to have a flip through and see what some of the other endings were just to see if there's any ghastly endings or is that cheating? I don't know if there is, to be honest with you. Let's have, let's have a little sneaky look. I'd be very surprised if there was a ghastly ending in that book. You and your you guide, should... this is just a random ending. You and your guide head downstream and you find the poachers killing tigers. <gasps> There's the whole tiger ending. <laughs> killing tigers <laughs> and elephants for their skins and tusks is a serious crime in Nepal. They don't believe in leaving evidence for their activities. You try running away into the forest, but the poachers are quick. They don't leave any witnesses. The end. Oh. Damn! Toby got taken out by a poacher. <laughs> wow, there was a little side tiger story. Yeah. And in, in it, you tigers. died. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of tiger ones. Sheesh. If you, you set off into the jungle moving as quickly as possible. Two hours later, you stop for a rest, swatting at the mosquitoes and picking off the leeches. With a raw, a magnificent tiger, at least eight feet in length from nose to tail, springs out of the bush. You are finished. The end. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh well, here's, here's, here's one of the ones that are more improbable what we found. You sit it out in your hotel for three weeks. The constant rain has closed off all the trails of the mountains and valleys and with mudslides and boulders moving, nature has gone wild and your expedition is blocked for good. Too bad. Try again next season. The end. <laughs> I think Jesus. that's what happens if we don't take Brunel's advice. Yeah. You know when he says, yeah. I'll join you. Yeah. Yeah, you get, rain, you get rained off. Blimey. Well, okay. One more, one more ending and then we'll, yeah. we'll call that a wrap. Near dawn, Carlos says, stop. Oh, Carlos says something. Man. <laughs> Near dawn, Carlos says, stop. I think I see something. Before your eyes, you see what you had come for. Dancing around a large fire, I leaven Yeti. You have stumbled into a Yeti celebration at the end of the monsoons. You are quietly watching, taking pictures and making notes. You have proved at last the Yeti really exists. Months later in Paris, France, at the International Explorers Conference, you and Carlos are given the highest award for your work. Success is both exciting and lonely. Good luck. The end. Oof. Why did they drop that little sound out at the and, end? Success is exciting lonely. and lonely. Yeah. Because we didn't find enlightenment. I guess I... Oh, yes. Good point. Mm. I thought maybe we killed Renault in a, in a, to get him to kill Renault. No, I, th- I, think, I think we found gratitude and and you know reward and acclaim you had to give up a lot actually, for it though. actually it doesn't amount to much at all in life yeah but the enlightenment means you can't really go back and go i guess one of them did but blimey happy christmas everyone yeah thank you very much for joining us on this journey throughout the year with, uh, hey check the this it out you ready <laughs> have a very yeti christmas <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Snow. All right. Snow. <laughs> that was a bizarre bit of bonkers. I've got about four of those over here. Have you? I'm into that. They're not all Yeti. They're Snow. We're going to wrap it up around there. I want to thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed. Join us again next episode. And until then, have a great day. <laughs>